Lawrence, how you doing, man? I'm all right. How are you? Man, I'm doing okay, man. I'm doing all right. He got a voice for radio. Yeah, he does. He got that voice for radio. (laughs) (laughs) Lawrence, I tell you, you know, you're a hard man to catch up with because um, you travel so much with so many people. uh, And um, sometimes I'll give you a call and you'll pick up the phone somewhere and you'll be somewhere in the darkest part of Africa. (laughs) Didn't know they had cell phone service there. It's amazing. (laughs) Um, So you, you, you got your start. Let's let's go back. Let's go back. You started playing what instrument first? Oh, I started playing drums first. Drums. Yeah. That seems to be the, the thing that all musicians wanted to do. Just yeah. banging pots and pans, you know. You got to understand rhythm first. Yeah, you do. <laughs> that helped. Yeah. Bang, then, bang, bang. Right. Then from drums, what you go? Uh, guitar. To guitar. Mm-hmm. Your first guitar you played on. Do you remember what it was? What what the name brand was? It? How many strings did it have? <laughs> well, I learned how to play guitar. Uh, my, my one of my cousins, Elder Megan's, uh, uh, okay. gave my dad an acoustic guitar. We called it a box guitar. Sure, the box for his birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, I was around maybe around two thousand one. I was like eleven, and at that time it had six strings on it. Wow! So I, I think by the time I started playing, it may have. Uh, I know I played like two chords. It probably had still six. Yeah, but I remember by the time. I started gigging and kind of knew it. I, it only had four strings. Wow! <laughs> so the guitar I learned how to play on, you know. Yeah, yeah. Four so you strings. played a high pitch bass, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> <For> high pitch bass. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Right, right. Boom, boom. And I, you know, sidetrack. And I want to, I want to thank D, uh, our engineer. Great because, job. Great job. Because I threw this stuff together at home and I gave it to him only five minutes before the show. And he had to go on his computer. Well, three minutes, really. That's true. And he had to go on his computer and throw stuff all over the place to make it make sense. That wasn't easy to do. And it took someone who had a lot of knowledge, you know, to do that. So he clapped for himself. So thank you, D. <laughs> D is a man. D used to be the engineer for the crazy Howard show on oh, WGCI. Okay. Uh, and um, and Schofield uh, have uh, given him some high, high mm-hmm. accolades. On his ability to give us that 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 uh, in the air uh, sound effects, <laughs> inspiration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the man. Um, now, Lawrence, uh, I'm sorry to waste time there, Lawrence. <laughs> I want to ask you about you. Why did you pick guitar? And why lead guitar? Why not bass guitar? Um, be- well, first, be- because the way it made me feel. My dad plays guitar. I think most children. Um, especially a man child he's going to want to be like the man in the house sure. so yeah. I was a, I was a child the way I heard music it just I heard it with um, a guitar so I only I started the drums first because it was by I didn't have no choice I wanted to mm-hmm. play guitar but I couldn't play it so sure. I knew how to make the drums do something right right yeah. but I just knew I could just, I just knew I was here to sit here to play guitar I just really? I just knew it yeah, how long do you think it took you to get to a place where you thought I'm confident I can now play for people? People, uh, mm-hmm. I was always made to play. Yeah, from day one, somebody made me get on the drums. My daddy made me play at church on mm-hmm. guitar. He said, oh, "You gonna you gonna play with people? You gonna play at church?" Mm-hmm. But I was at home one day and, and somebody came looking for one of my brothers, and this one I just we were just playing around the house. So I was like 13. He's like, "Hey man." Play that again. I was playing one of the Indie Irish songs, mm-hmm. um, and it had four strings on it at the time. Sure. So he was like, okay. So he just took me under his wing and started showing me how to tune a guitar, how to do mm-hmm. this and that. And from there, I would just like go around the city here and there and play with him. So mm-hmm. I, it was always a situation where somebody made me. Absolutely. Did it? Did you cater your style after someone in particular? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Lots or just uh, one individual. So, certain things, like certain things. My my always had my own sound. You know, I yeah. came with a family sound. Sound like my sure. daddy. Absolutely. Know? So, but outside of that, uh, Jonathan Abose, mm-hmm. of course, um, um, Joy Wolfhawk he plays. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Um, yes, one of the greats. And uh, Derek Buckingham he used to play with New Direction, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Chicago Mass. Sure. Uh, he was there before I got there. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Then you started playing for recording artists. Who was your first recording artist you started playing for? You remember? Yeah, Joshua's Troop. Joshua's Troop. Now that's, that's headed. Point, yeah. That's headed by Percy, right? Mm-hmm. Gray. Percy Gray. Okay. Now he's got Joshua's Troop and New Direction, I believe. 
and he does things with Chicago Mass. Chicago Mass. Uh-huh. Uh huh. They had Praise Two for a while. Praise Two. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You started playing lead guitar with him. And what was your first recording with him? You remember? Uh, my first recording with him was with Joshua Troop. Uh, I was sixteen. You were uh, sixteen? Yeah, I was sixteen. I can't remember the. Yeah. Uh, everybody. Clap your hands. Oh, yeah, really? that's you, boy. Yeah. It was good. It was good. <laughs> yeah. I was doing concerts before then, but that yeah. was my first recording. My mm-hmm. first recording was with mm-hmm. Third Jurisdiction. Third? Oh, Third, Bishop yeah. Sanders. Bishop Sanders. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. I it was think. 13. I got completely over that. What? Yeah. <laughs> he said I got completely over that. I heard the ghost tracks. <laughs> <laughs> you bled through, bro. Yeah, you bled. You bled. <laughs> Yeah, I heard a story uh, with uh, Jonathan DeBose would tell me about a story. Uh, what's the song? What's the the hit song by the Hawkins? Thank you, Lord, for yes. all you yeah. have done. Yes. The thing went about 10, 15 mm-hmm. minutes long. Mm-hmm. And, you know, now he's he's on that track. Uh, but, ding, yeah, ding, ding, ding. But he, uh, he wasn't originally selected for that. Someone else was selected for it. Mm. And they did the gig, uh, well, the, the ghost. And then it... it it didn't work out for the producers. Yeah, so they brought him in. But that's how he came in, taking over. Yeah, yeah, he was head hunting. Yeah, he was head hunting. Yeah, as they used to say in the blues days. Yeah, and then then Tremaine, it someone else had was doing Tremaine's uh, stuff, and then they didn't like that lead guitar, so they brought him in to do Tremaine stuff. Down, down, down. So you would hear, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> that's straight <laughs> Jonathan. Um, mm-hmm. So you so um, when did you start playing for Fred Hammond? Um, February of two thousand and nine. Two thousand and nine. I was nineteen at the time. Really, and it, that's been a long relationship, you know, it's from nine until now. Because you're still with him, right? Well, yeah, it's well, on pause right now. But. Sure, sure. Um, how many? Do you remember how many projects you've done with him? I, I did three Fred Hammond projects, I, I believe. I did other ones like yeah. in, other things he produced, but I believe it's three. Three of them. Where where have you traveled with him? Uh, we've been to Africa, London, Canada, here in the United States. Yeah. Been so, around yeah. the world and I, I, I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I went to Brazil. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, who are you with now? Nick Jonas. Of the Jonas Brothers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because uh, I remember turning on TV, and late night TV, who was it? Not the Ferguson. Who was that? Uh, Seth Myers. Seth Myers. I turned it on and I saw this dude with a funny hat and a long coat. Looked like he's getting ready to shoot up somebody in the studio. <laughs> I said, "Wait, man, he looked like a Jones." <laughs> and that's my nephew. That's yeah. a great feeling, it, I imagine. Yeah, it is. It is a great feeling to turn on TV and see. And it's not just him because then I see his brother uh, uh, with the the jazz uh, uh, pianist. Uh, Brian Coberson. Brian Coberson. I yeah. see him on stage wow. in, in somewhere over there in the West Coast, and I see this dude is ten thirty at night. to come out the wheel of time, y'all did. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, it's just it's just an honor to to, to see my nephews do Living what they the do. And there's more, they're more they're more coming because we got Paul now, and who's John. playing. Yeah, I uh, well he played with uh, Donna Buster was G three and a mm-hmm. few other people, and then you got John right coming up, and then his sisters Christina. Is uh, a praise and worship. The Jones is taking over the world. Yeah, we're taking over. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna take over. Um, so now you're still on tour, but you you on tour with Jonas now. Uh, and where you headed now? You on break right now? Uh, yeah, a little yeah. break. It's just week break, two breaks. Sure. Week break. Yeah, yeah. And you're back on the road when? Uh, next week. Next week. Okay. Where you headed? Uh, we're going to Canada. Canada. Good old Canada. What part of Canada? You know? Vancouver. Oh, Vancouver. East side. That's oh. the west side. Okay, okay. West Canada. What, yeah, what, what them bears? <laughs> Keep your coat and your gun. <laughs> Are you a songwriter? Uh, I am. I yeah. haven't got to lyrics just yet. Okay, you're working on that part. So you're a tune writer. I'm you're a tune. tune writer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. As long as it's not uh, Looney Tunes, <laughs> you'll be all right. <laughs> Kill the rabbit. Kill the wabbit. I would love to write Kill music for Looney Tunes, though. Really? Absolutely. Yeah, yes. yeah. Now I've heard your orchestrations And I really Hello, love them Hello my baby Hello my honey Right right, oh, right. You telling your age man Oh yeah And you can stop that <laughs> Overture Turn the lights <laughs> <laughs> You um, A lot of your, your writing And your orchestration What software do you use? Contact Contact With the K mm-hmm. Yeah Why contact? Uh, it's the closest thing 
inside of Logic and Pro Tools that I know that has realer sounding strings. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of digital sounding things. You know? Right. I like natural. Um, I think the best the, to get to, the best way to get the best emotions is from natural instruments that came out of the ground and made with wood. That's true. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. The vibrations. Contact. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna get that. Mm-hmm. Contact yeah. helps me helps me get closest. Absolutely. Yeah. But. Mm-hmm. I plan on having the real orchestration. Sure, absolutely, eventually, yeah, yeah. But right now, that's the best, next best thing to be in there is contact. Um, that analog world is nothing like it. Uh, I remember, I remember being in the studio with um, who did we just mention the the, the jazz pianist Brian Colberson. Colberson, right? Brian Colberson and this horn, the other jazz hornist horn player that that do things with him. Um, you hear their their music on WNUA when we when it was here ninety five point five. Not not Dick with Uh uh-uh. uh uh uh. Him and Brian does a lot of, does a lot of things together. I went down I was downtown to check out a new studio. It wasn't new. To, it was new to me. And I walked in the room and there was Brian Corbison and, and the other young man. And um, I just went down there because I wanted to book some time. Uh, and I and I heard, I heard this sound that I'm just like oh my god this man is amazing, um, and he he writes songs, his his songs when you first hear them the melody hits you in the face mm. and you mm. can't forget them mm. okay yeah and I think there's something about a a a hook in a song if if it hits you that first thirty seconds. And it, it's got you. It pulled you in. Yeah, that's it. You're that's hooked. why they call that's it the hook. Yes. Yeah. And if you can't get them, if you can't win them in the first twenty seconds, uh, sometimes they'll some, they're patient enough to hear the thirty seconds. But usually around twenty seconds, if you don't get them, they they move on. Mm-hmm. They turn the radio station somewhere else. You know. And I think that's important. Um, um, now that's if you depending on the style of music that you that you like, I believe. Yes, the, the, your, your genre, your genre, and your palate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your, your taste for it, because I, do, when you get in the car, Lawrence, or on your iPod, or iPhone, what have you, and now, now my shows can be controversial, okay? Right. Uh, but we're very open and we're transparent about the things that we we enjoy and the things that we don't enjoy. Uh, if I was to listen to your music right now in your phone. What would be the genre I would hear the most? As far as like the music I've bought and mm-hmm. that that's yeah that you bought because if you buying it that means you you enjoy it. Well, yeah. Well, unless you have to, unless you like me, I have choirs that I have to study, learn stuff. I have to learn stuff, so I may buy. So, cause, sometimes so. that outside of that, um, most of the albums I buy is stuff I played on, but uh, or I just buy, I like I buy. Oh, I, I'm trying to get into a lot of different music, so mm-hmm. I've been buying a lot of pop lately. Okay, some some rap. I've never been super deep into it, but in uh, rap, yeah, yeah, n- never been super deep into rap. But um, um, in my iPod, whew, it's gonna be a, it's a wide a lot of wide different different variety things. range. Yeah, but it's still not things that everybody will listen to. <clears throat> sure, it's a lot of country music in there. It's a lot of gospel mm-hmm. in there. I love uh, mm-hmm. a lot of uh, orchestral music. Mm. Yeah, and, um, just yeah. you know, t- stuff like that. Yeah, that's that's why that's why they say musicians are so eccentric. Is that the word? Eclectic, eclectic. That's the yes, word. Yes, yeah. versatile. Yeah, yeah. Because that's an itch that's hard to scratch. It is. We'll if you are a true musician, not mm-hmm. a player, mm-hmm. a musician. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I I like to define the difference between the two because a musician may cross genres. And you feel the same impact regardless of what the genre they're playing. Yeah. But a player can just be skilled, and you tell them to play yeah. it, and they play it, and you I, don't you don't experience his heart. You don't experience any genuine connect to the song. You just play the song, get paid, walk away. That's true. Yeah, I, I like to think people say music is a language, but it's it's a language. But I feel like it's like a emotion language. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So so um, like when I meet a lot of people who don't sing, who don't do anything, but some of those people I know, they know more. Music than I more different styles mm-hmm. of music than I do, mm-hmm. and like I'm t- I'm talking about musical, really mm-hmm. musical styles mm-hmm. of music. Mm-hmm. It's their emotion. It's Absolutely. Two, one is their emotion and their level of understanding. Yeah. Uh, I I put uh, my one of my songs one time uh, recently on 
TuneCore, and that's where you put upload music to.